Hi there, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today's notes are going to be labeled 2.1, Rational Numbers. Notice we are starting Chapter 2 today, so this is Chapter 2, Lesson 1, so hence the 2.1. Today in your notes, you're going to be writing down nine things, and there are three parts to it. Writing fractions as decimals, writing decimals as fractions, and ordering rational numbers. So let's go ahead and get started to see what a rational number is. The first thing you're going to notice that you're going to need to write down is the definition of a rational number. So you're going to write down everything on this slide. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction where the numerator and denominator, meaning top and bottom numbers, are integers, positive or negative, and the denominator is not equal to zero. So some examples would be like negative one-half or one-half. You can also write down um, decimals because decimals can also be written as fractions, okay? Um, you could even write down, you can have 0 0.33 repeating because it can be written as a fraction. Just make sure that if you use the repeated numbers, it can be written as a fraction. So a rational number is essentially a number that can be written as a fraction and it can be positive, oops, or negative. So positive or negative. So let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video. So you can copy down what's here and maybe some examples too. So you just choose two examples and then press play when you're ready to go on. So here's the first part about how to write fractions as decimals. And this part you might already know about before. The first one's really easy because one-fourth is a common decimal. One-fourth we know is equal to 0 0.25. So if you've got this whole number with it, we just tack it on on the front. So negative 2 and 1 fourth is the same thing as negative 2.25, okay? I'm going to maybe show you a little bit more complicated one in letter B, though. When you don't really have that fraction memorized, you're going to have to divide to find what that is written as a decimal. Here's how I know how to do this. The top number always goes inside and the bottom number on the outside. First in line, first inside. Kind of like a movie theater. First in line, first inside. And then you just divide like normal. 11 can't go into 5, so I have to add a 0 and a decimal so that 5 can change to a 50. 11 will go into 50 four times because 4 times 11 is 44. I get 6 left over. And I can bring down another 0 and start the process again. 11 goes into 60 five times because 5 times 11 is 55, and I get 5 left over, bring down a 0, 11 goes into 50 four times, because 4 times 11 is 44, and you start to see a little pattern that's happening, okay? What's happening is that these four, the 4 and the 5 are repeating, so we would write 5 elevenths as 0 0.45 with the repetition bar, the bar notation above it which just means those two decimals repeat in that same order. So we would have 0 0.45, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5 to infinity and beyond. Thank you, Buzz Lightyear. That is essentially how you're going to be doing that. So the first number always goes inside the bottom number on the outside, and you're just dividing, adding a decimal when needed. If you are, if you are noticing that there's a pattern with repetition, then yes, definitely want to use your bar notation. These next few, you're going to pause and do them by yourself. So go ahead and take time now to pause the video and try them by yourself. So the first one I've already set up for us, it's negative 6 fifths. So again, remember, top number, first number, first in line, first inside, inside the box. This one's obviously going to give us a whole number because it's an improper fraction, because it can also be written as a mixed number. 5 can go to 6 once, 1 times 5 is 5, we have 1 left over. I don't have anything else to bring down, so I have to drop a decimal to bring me a 0. And 5 can go to 10 nicely, 2 times. So that means my negative 6 fifths is equal to negative 1.2. Number 3, same way. What I'm essentially going to do is just focus on this fraction first and then worry about my whole number. First in line, first inside. So 3 is on the inside. 8 can't go into 3, but 8 can go into 30. 8 can go into 30 three times because 8 times 3 is 24. I get 6 left over, bring down another 0 so I can keep playing. 
8 goes into 60, what's that, 7 times, because 7 times 8 is 56. I get 4 left over here, bring down one more, and 8 goes into 40, nice and easy, 5 times. So negative 7 and the 3 eighths is also the same thing as negative 7.375. Because all we're doing is we're just tacking on that decimal there. Okay, the last one you might be able to associate with the other fraction we did on the previous slide with the 11th. Again, first in line, first inside. Might be seeing a pattern here. 11 couldn't go into 3, so I added a decimal so I could bring a 0 down. 11 can go into 30 now two times, because 11 times 2 is 22. 8 left over, bring me another 0. 11 into 87 times, 7 times 11, 77. 3 left over, and by now you start to see a little bit of a pattern that has started to develop here. Okay, so what we're going to say is number 4, negative 3 elevenths is equal, equivalent to negative 0 0.27 repeating. How did we do? So this little next part, part 2, is writing decimals as fractions. Again, you're just watching here. This is really easy because what you're going to do is you're going to, you're essentially just going to say this decimal in its proper place value. So this negative 0 0.26 in proper form would be negative 0 and 26 hundredths. Negative 0 and 26 hundredths can be written as a fraction, 26 hundredths. Once you write as a fraction, yes, all fractions have to be in simplest form. And that just means you've got to simplify it. Find the numbers that have, that have both 26 and 100 in common. I have an easy one for us since they're both even. I can divide these both by 2, so I'm going to cut them in half. 26 cut in half is 13, 100 cut in half is 50. No other numbers are alike, or no other factors can go into 13 and 50. So that's actually going to be my final number, negative 13 fiftieths. So these you're going to try by yourself. They're pretty simple because a few of them you don't even have to simplify. So what you're going to go ahead and do is pause the video and write the decimal as a fraction or a mixed number because some of those might be a, frac a whole number in a fraction. Just make sure they're also in simplest form. Go ahead and try them. Click play when you're ready to check. So number five is going to be negative zero and seven tenths. So how to write that? You have a seven on top and the ten on the bottom. Cannot be simplified, so that's your final answer. Number six, that's zero and tenths, hundreds, thousands, so 125 over 1,000. Here's where you really had to focus on um, simplifying and maybe finding a bigger number other than five. I like to think of quarters, so I'm going to divide both of these by 25. And I think how many quarters make a dollar 25? That'd be five. And how many quarters make $10? That's going to be 40. And then I can simplify 5 40ths one more time. If I divide both those by 5, I get 1 8th for number 6. Number 7, finally, negative 3 and 1 tenth. So negative 3 is my big number, and 1 tenth is my fraction. Already simplified, so I'm good to go. And the last one for number 8, negative 10 and 25 hundredths. Again, think about quarters here, and that's going to be your um, greatest common factor, so you only have to simplify one time. 25 divided by 25 is 1, 100 divided by 25 is 4, so I have negative 10 and 1 fourth as my answer for number 8. How did we do on this slide? The last one I'm just going to show you really quickly, and you're going to watch, then pause, so you can write it down, okay? The last part of your homework you'll see is you're going to be ordering these things from least to greatest. Here is what I would suggest you do to order things or compare rational numbers and least. I would recommend change all your numbers to decimals. The reason is is because we use decimals so much more, I believe, than fractions. You see decimals um, mainly every day with money, so that's a little bit easier to think about. So I'm just going to change all these to decimals real quick. So here these all are in their decimal format. Remember, least number is actually the largest negative, so that's going to look like negative 1.66. Then it's going to be negative 0.5. Then negative 0.33. Negative 0.33. 
and then fourth will be 0 0.5, and then fifth will be 1.25. So just like you did in chapter one, you're going to write these back in the original form. Negative 1.66 is negative 5 thirds. Um, negative 0.5 is still the same thing. Negative 0 0.33 repeating is negative 1 third. Um, 0 0.5, same thing, and then 1.25, same thing. Okay, so here are all my answers from least to greatest order after I have changed them to decimals. If you haven't had a chance already, let's go ahead and pause this section of the video, write what I did down, make sure you also write down, change them all to decimals. That really does help when you're ordering, and when you're done, click play to see what you're supposed to do next. So that's going to conclude our video. Um, just make sure that you have those nine things written in your notes, the definition of rational numbers, and then you have examples of fractions and decimals, decimals and fractions, and then ordering rational numbers. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Next.